Hello. In this dot loop minute session, we're going to talk about sharing documents. Uh, so a couple things when it comes to sharing documents. We have been working on, or I have been working on, or working with real estate agent disclosure and exclusive right to sell. I've been filling in the blanks and setting them up, getting them ready to share. You may have noticed when I don't have anything checked, I don't have as many options uh, up here near the top of my, of my loop. However, once I start checking boxes, options pop up and I got some different options here. And you can see one of those options is to share. I recommend sharing within each document, not each loop. So what do I mean by that? These are the two documents that I wanna share with my seller. So instead of clicking share, I want to just go ahead and open them. The first time you go into a document, the autofill box will pop up and allow you to um, fill in who you have in the people as whatever your role is, <clears throat> in this case would be the listing agent, and then the people for your seller's role as well. Since I've already been in these documents, <clears throat> then the autofill didn't come up automatically. However, I still have the option to autofill it. So even though it never, it only comes up automatically that first time, you still have the control to autofill it each time. But I've been in here, I've done my documents, completed everything, and now I just need to send to my seller for signatures. I'm going to take one more quick to make sure all fields are filled out. And we're going to pretend that they are <laughs> our listing agreement here. Um, all of the roles have been assigned properly. So I have uh, Sarah Seller for the initials and then the listing agent. Once I'm satisfied that everything is complete, remember, once we do anything, I'm just going to fill something in here. Once we do anything... Our options at the top again changed here. So once I've filled in a blank, you can see now I have two uh, other choices. The save field was blacked out, blocked out before. And now I have the option to save and share. Dot loop even suggests that we don't save and share. So hit save once you make any changes. Just remember to save periodically in dot loop so you don't lose your work. Once everything is saved, you see how that's kind of dolled out and it's not an option. It's because I haven't changed anything. And now my option here is just to share. So once you have these complete, and you're satisfied and you're ready to send them out for signatures, you hit save and then you hit share. And you can see here that I am about to send uh, two documents working with real estate agent disclosure and our exclusive right to sell to Sarah Seller um, that has 17 assigned fields. These are initial fields, signature fields. The default is for Sarah Seller, for our clients to just sign. I do wanna show you that we have options. We can save view only. So maybe you're not sharing for signatures. Maybe you're just sharing uh, as part of the compliance for the commission rule to deliver all instruments. So maybe you have uh, you're just sharing executed instruments. We have the option to can fill and sign. I think this would be a good option for like the ARPOs, the MOG, things that sellers need to actually do something to. Of course, we can also uh, still print it to them and have them do it by hand. And then there's can edit and private. I don't recommend that for, for clients. Can edit and private would be something like internally. So if you have a team member, a co-list that you're working on something with and you want them to be able to edit something, that might be an example. But as far as allowing um, our clients full control to edit the document, I, I don't, I can't think of many times that that would apply. So can sign is the default. Um, again, we see the two documents, the field, you can put a custom message. So here, you know, are the docs I said I would send, you know, whatever. And then the other thing, before we hit share, I want to bring your attention to this down here in the bottom right. The recommendation anytime you share documents is that you attach a PDF to this email. So what that means is in addition to getting a message from Dot Loop that says, hey, your agent, Julie Campbell, has something for you to sign, click here to begin signing. 
They will also have the documents in a PDF in the email so they can peruse those, they can browse those if they want to. Uh, for those of you that have signed, been on that end of it, you know, trying to navigate it and view the document as you sign it can get a little uh, cumbersome. So making it available to them as a PDF and letting them know that it's there. You can look at it before you sign it. Let me know if you have any questions before you sign it. And then that may be able to better ensure that they don't have any questions, um, that you know what it is that they're, you, you know, what's going on. Once we have that set up, then we can hit share and it will go to their email. Uh, we have another video coming about what that would look like as a recipient. So you can even share that with your clients if they want to take a minute to look at that um, before they sign it. And if they have any questions, of course, we want them to be able to come to you. The other thing about sharing documents that came up when we did this dot loop minutes, it was mentioned about kind of grouping documents into different categories, if you will. So we just shared our agency paperwork, working with real estate agent disclosure and exclusive right to sell. Maybe next we send the RPODs and the MOB because we know with these, there's going to have to be more uh, interaction on their part. Maybe we share that with the listing of, uh, activation form so they can fill that out, utility providers. Maybe then in the next section or the next batch we do, for example, a seller estimated net and wire fraud, for example, but maybe sending them in batches instead of all at once might be a little less intimidating as well. Just a best practice that, that came up, um, particularly with the ones that you may want to consider separating the ones that need them to do something. So we have, let's just do a couple here so we don't bog the system down, but we have our RPOs and our MOG. If I open them, this is what we were saying earlier. Since this is the first time we've been in this document, the autofill box came up automatically. So I can identify Sarah Seller as Seller 1. Um, there's nothing for me to do in these seller disclosures. So that's the only role it's pulling. When I autofill, then you can see Sarah Seller's name kind of automatically filled in. Again, I don't have much to do here. So what I need to just make sure is that the address is in. We look at the MOG, make sure the address and the Sarah Seller. I'm going to save, share, see the assigned roles, and then I'm going to give Sarah Seller the ability to fill and sign um, so they can see she can, can, can complete the RPODs and the MOG. I would say it's a more savvy consumer that can do this. Um, if they're struggling, of course, we can help walk them through the phone over the phone. I do think so, in some cases with the RPOs and the MOG, it might be still might be best practice to print it out and hand it to them, you know, depending on the transaction, depending on the client. Uh, but just know that they have the ability to fill and sign for documents that uh, we think would work. So that is that this dot loop minute on sharing documents and the best practice about bashing them together. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.